All right. Okay. It is April 21st. This is episode 29 of the NBA show. Woo! We have a great show for you today. You're going to find out who the dumbest undergrads in America are. Our, our guest today is going to be Farat Aslan. And today our show is sponsored by the Venture Cafe in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Thank because, you. Thank you, Venture Cafe. Because great things happen when smart people bump into each other. Venture Every Thursday, 3 to 8 p.m. at 1 Broadway in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And most importantly, they serve free beer. <laughs> Let's go to our headlines. So what's our headline, Tom? Business majors are the dumbest. That's right. The New York Times and the Chronicle of Higher Education reported the results of the National Survey of Student Engagement. They found what all of my Phi Beta oh, Capra liberal arts friends already knew, the dumbest students in America are business majors. <laughs> That's right. Come on, come on. That's, no, this is true. So undergraduate business majors, when they take the GMAT, score lower than any other oh, major on the business school entrance exam. That, that's the business school entrance test. That's supposed to be their thing. That's like that's like if you know if students at the sprinting school of running are finishing last in NCAA races. This is true. <laughs> I mean, like they didn't. It, it would be like they didn't do any actual running. They just did a bunch of group projects about running. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets worse. Business majors they spend the least time studying of any other major, and they improve the least academically over the course of their four years in college <laughs> of any other major. Yes, that's right. That's right. But, you know, they were statistically tied with education majors. Seriously? <laughs> yes. Okay, so the, only, so the worst majors apparently in terms of learning are business majors and the people who educate wait, wait, hold on, everyone hold on. else. But I can explain this. I can explain this. How? Why, so why, why would you choose to be a business major? It's because you want to get a kick-ass finance job like me. Or you're lazy. <laughs> and, you know, what is it that you need to do to get a job? You need to get out there and you need to be networking. You need to be not sitting at home reading a book like a nerd. But, but we want people getting these jobs who are the smartest. But you know, success should not be measured by some weird metric that you made up. It should be measured by what they care about. What they care about is salary and who's getting the best salaries. So this is true. So undergraduate business majors graduate with the highest salaries of any other major, but philosophy majors catch up by mid-career. <laughs> philosophy majors. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a little bit hard to believe, but I, I guess I, I, I could be persuaded to get, to, you know, to go along with it, you know? I, 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 you know, look, what I think this means is we need to get rid of the undergraduate business major. Get rid of it? Get rid of it. No, no, college, no, 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 College is about learning how to think. Liberal arts education is what trains people to think. That's what college is for. No, what we need is, we don't need less undergrad, we need more undergrad business majors. Well, first of all, it's the largest group of majors by far. Second of all, it, based on the salary data, it seems like the market is calling for more undergraduate business majors, not less. So if anything, we need to be pumping this thing up. No. Plus, they make more money, which means they're basically better people. <laughs> Are you? Look, I'm not a better person because I can read a balance sheet. I'm a better person because I know Heidegger in the original oh German. Oh my god, I'm not so sure, buddy. <laughs> Just keep telling How yourself else that. could I, and this is true, have written a Marxist critique of, of how to calculate NPV? Oh, come on. Let's, let, we better move on okay. quickly. Okay, so we'd like to welcome our guest on the show today. And our Ladies guest and today, gentlemen, please welcome Ferrat Aslan. <laughs> Sorry, <Tom>. uh. <laughs> <laughs> So Farad, it's great to have you here today. So Farad is, uh, is, of, is of Turkish birth, uh, re educated in Switzerland, studied in Australia, and is currently touring the U.S. You, sir, are a truly international man of mystery. We are, we are honored to have you here today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so you have a lot of perspective on this. We have, we have a really important question for you. We've just heard that undergraduate business majors in the U.S. are the dumbest people um, in the entire U.S. educational system. <laughs> are European business majors as stupid? No, uh, I mean, they, they, of course, they pay oh, a nice no. tuition fee. I mean, that, <laughs> probably that, that has a connection. How, how, much do you, how much do you pay in tuition a year? Um, don't get jealous. 700 Swiss francs, that's about 800 US dollars. Are you oh my gosh, I paid more than that for books. They weren't <laughs> even books, they were pieces of paper laminated to look like books. <laughs> So what are the big differences? Like when you, you've been in a bunch of different countries, what are, you, what are the big differences that you see? Well, um, you know, in terms of education, it's probably, you know, Switzerland is kind of, um, you know, mixed. We got, all of, we got all of different stuff together. I mean, we got 25% foreigners, apart from having the 
the, 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 you know, the, the Swiss, yep. supposedly Swiss. I mean, we got four official languages, that tells everything. Ah, and okay. other countries. Do you, you speak got, all of those? Uh, except Romansh, I speak all of the other three, which are German, Italian, and French. So you're just getting a more international experience in Europe b by default, it sounds like, of, of, how, of how many people there are. Yeah, I mean, um, especially in Switzerland, because we got yeah. four, as I said, four official languages, and we don't have that high tuition fee. So American students, I invite you to come over to Switzerland, because, I mean, that's... No, actually, that's <laughs> actually do go. Apparently the education is, the education is better. Um, it's and the cheaper. Are better. And, and when you leave, there'll be more jobs left over for us. This is great. True story, yeah. So, if, if you're, so you're, you're here studying, you're doing a tour of the, of the U.S. right now, Right. And, you know, it seems like you're super international. For those friends of ours who are thinking about doing international business, when they get out in the marketplace and they're competing with you, are you basically going to crush them like a small, small bug? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, honestly, I mean, you got Of course, you got to have the international experience. Um, it's part of the job. So what skills does it bring? Like, what skills does your international experience bring you that you think um, people without that, uh, that, you know, that they suffer? You know, I mean, for instance, intercultural um, experience, that is really important. I would know how to deal with um, truly, let's say, Japanese yep. or Chinese, Indian, whatever, Aussies. Um, that all, you know, that all brings together this experience and you can handle the situations well better than all the guys who are just sitting at home and reading the books like the nerds you were mentioning. <laughs> also in the US we watch television, so we have racial yeah. stereotypes to go on. <laughs> oh. That we have too. That's true. If you study abroad, right. some of those stereotypes might be destroyed, and that could be very make some of the American students feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I had that experience too. Now I'm watching How I Met Your Mother, and uh, <laughs> it kind of, you know, kind of worked. So we have a segment on the show that we call Jargon, and what this is, where we talk about a uh, a word that MBA students or business students should know but probably don't. And our jargon comes from Farat this week, and the jargon is: Don't tell us. Don't tell us. Gru, gru, yeah. oh, actually, do, do tell, do tell us what is right. it, what is this word? <laughs> um, you would you would say Grietzi or Solitame if, if it's a bigger group, and Grietzi. that means hello. Grietzi. 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 You, know, you know, it doesn't. It's not spelled like that at all. Well, <laughs> we would it's have a, clearly spelled Grugier. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a cheese, man. That's oh, a, you know. fair enough. Okay. And why is it? Important? I think your Miro is a cheese. <laughs> So, what, oh, so what is this? This is a greeting. Yeah, that is the greeting, the traditional Swiss greeting, um, which you probably would use in the northern part. Yep. Not in Bern, as some of my fellow friends over here. They would say Griesig, which is kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Losers. And yeah, and why, totally. And why is it important to know these kind of words like this? Like, what does it signify if you know this? You know, the Swiss, um, they, they kind of connect to you uh, really fast. If you got some catchphrases so to yep. speak or if you if you have somehow shown that you learned something from that country yeah even though it's really small and get everybody gets confused about Switzerland and Sweden but yeah that, that that's the reason you so connect. It's, not, it's a show of good faith yeah and it sounds like this is this is a, a very important tip that's universal across all cultures not just Swiss like if you're gonna do business with any anybody from a different culture to yourself being able to say hello in their language Definitely. It's very important. You don't want to walk in and say hello in your language. It's like, hey, guess what? I'm all about myself. <laughs> Give me some money. So if you're going to learn one word in, uh, in another language, learn their greeting. And if you're in the northern part of Switzerland, you're going to say... Grietzi Okay, <laughs> that word. Which, um, which is a good segue, actually, into our business school tip of the week. So our business school tip of the week comes from Vrat this week. Vrat, what is your tip for MBAs? Well, learn a language. And why is that important? Because uh, learning a language gives you not only the language skills, but also the cultural you know, background and insights. So when I started, for instance, uh, you know, Spanish, it helped me out getting the Spanish background as well as the Latin American stuff. So, you know, you get into a different culture and it opens your eyes for, for, for different... And how many languages do you speak? Uh, well, officially, I would say six. Some of them oh my gosh. better than others. I mean, three fluent. We're doomed from a business <laughs> point of view. Like, like America yeah. is doomed on Ameri the international yeah, business Yeah, I mean, scene. the average for Americans is like one point X, and the X is a small number. It's like 1.2 or something. Everybody knows one language that they use to ask for food. <laughs> and then they know like a token language that they can they would be embarrassed to even say out loud. So if you're an MBA, time is at a premium. And let's say yeah. I really want to go yeah. into operations in South America. 
is my time better spent taking that operation? Let's say I have to choose that operations class or taking that Portuguese class. Um, I would say the other class, which is you start, but you know, in the undergraduate studies with a with with a with a language, and you take it seriously. It's not just you know uh, going to cozy and watching the nice cafe right. sorts they have. That that's in Spanish. You got to really know that stuff. Although what's nice about MBA programs is that you have these international students around, and you can hang out with them. Um, and it may be an ask, but ask them to speak. Ask them. You know, you could ask the international students in yeah. your program to speak to you in their language. We That's a great way to practice. Definitely. I mean, we could start speaking Swiss German. That would be totally cool right now. <laughs> we'll get started on that right after the show. Farhad, thank you so much for coming. If you're looking for, now onto some bonus content, teasing, if you're looking for a cheap and easy way to build a community, right, and you want to do it real easy, sign up for the newsletter for access to our bonus content where we're going to be interviewing Carrie Stalder, manager here at Venture Cafe. Yep. That's on our website, www.thembashow.com. So, Miro, what is on your radar? Uh, this weekend, I'm doing a two a two hour meditation workshop uh, to learn to <laughs> learn how to calm myself um, when I should be studying a language. And uh, in honor of that, I'll be doing a two minute meditation workshop, proving that I'm sixty times more efficient than you. <laughs> and uh, Farad, what will you be doing this weekend? What are you up to? Uh, I'll be going uh, to New York. You know. Um, and on Saturday, just check out Wall Street and so on. All right, well, you can meditate um, your whole way there. <laughs> yeah, you could. You could meditate that Network in New York the student project does a good job. And uh, yeah, you can check out our homepage, www.nwny.ch. It's an unbelievable organization. That's nwny.ch. That's true. Uh, this week, again, as always, I'm Miro Kaz. I'm the real Tom Rose. Firo Nice to see you. And you've, and been, you've been watching, watching the, the NBA, NBA show. show. That was